can you give us your name and your affiliation? Okay, my name is Yoon Jae-mi Kim. I'm a PhD student at Department of Integrated Studies in Education. Uh, could you give us a summary of your research? My research is about looking at the relation between local indigenous knowledge and Western modern science, what is also known as just conventional science, and how we could actually create education system that teaches both of this knowledge system. Why is diversity important to you? Why is diversity important to me? You know, our Canadian prime minister once said, <laughs> diversity is a strength, not weakness. And especially in terms of STEM education, um, the more the merrier. And I personally think that in science culture, we have this universal notion of whatever is being taught in science classroom is the truth and students don't become critical thinker. So diversity in a way is bringing more perspective, more ideas, becoming, you know, making more science more inclusive, creative, and making students and citizens more critical thinker. In what ways are you trying to bring indigenous knowledge and perspectives into the classroom? That is a very good question. Um, there are two main reasons that I advocate for local indigenous knowledge and science education. First is for political reason. Um, we are moving towards the reconciliation era. Um, if we were to if the definition of science is getting to know our surrounding better, then of course our surrounding, the original inhabitant of this land is of course local indigenous people and they have this vast knowledge and practice. So why don't we hear what they've been practicing for thousands of years? Um, and also research, education research has been shown that if we were to include local indigenous perspective in science education, the score of indigenous students on test actually goes up. So that's the first political reason. Um, second is for diversity reason why. Um, there's been lots of research done how um, having the understanding from local indigenous perspective and this universal global um, Western science, how we could actually merge or have conversation together and then come up with better solutions for our climate changes and the problems that we have. So more in terms of epistemolo epistemological diversity reason why. Can you tell us about your journey through um, the education system and some difficulties that you might have found along the way? In science? So uh, I was born in Korea, right? um, so I don't know if you know, um, in Korea, they have heavy emphasis on STEM education early on. So probably when I was in junior high, I gave up on science, STEM, because it was too difficult for me. I was a type of students who will get 100% in art, get like 30% in physics, and probably 60 in biology. <laughs> And then when I came to Canada, I experienced science education, STEM education, that's different. So I had lots of field trip. We actually had a discussion. We even actually had an indigenous elder coming into classroom in my high school. And it made science more real to me, um, rather than just this knowledge formula that I actually have to regurgitate in order to get the good score. So uh, when it was time for me to choose my degree, I decided to pursue biology at University of Manitoba. Um, and during the degree of biology at University of Manitoba, one of the core courses that I have to take was indigenous science, two courses. And those courses are very different. You know, you know, if you go to science class lecture here in university, you go into sit, sit in your lecture hall, probably other 70, 80 students listening to presentation, and probably you do some lab work, you have to send in lab report, but this indigenous science courses, it's 20, 30 people, and then basically you hear people talk about their life story. And first you were like, why do I have to learn this cultural stuff in my third year bio? And then you actually have to do more field work. So for me, it was boreal ecology, so I have to go out 
make igloos and talk to the elders how they survived in harsh weather um eating beaver <laughs> type of stuff so through that experience i actually understood science in indigenous context or indigenous knowledge in western science context so it actually had i actually had an opportunity to appreciate the diversity that exists in, in knowledge that come knowledge that involved in getting to know nature so uh, i decided to become a science teacher but i wanted to become a science teacher on reserve that was whole point of me pursuing education but that didn't happen that's okay that's live so i pursued master's uh, grad student like now phd thinking about how we could actually create that science education that teaches kids early on the benefit of multiple ways of coming to know nature including indigenous knowledge science so that's sort of the journey <laughs> Were there any times where you felt that you were treated differently because you were you were a woman in science? I wouldn't say because I was woman. Um, because I am Asian Canadian, I was treated differently. Not because of negative stereotype that exists, because of positive stereotype that existed. So because of I am Asian, when I first came to Canada, I was put in grade eleven math and science automatically even though I was in grade 10 just they had a stereotype that I might be better than normal grade 10 students but that wasn't true like I told you I was getting 20s and 30 percent my go so but it carried out through because I'm my mission I you know maybe it's it worked positively for me because they had had higher expectation for me so I did better but my um I went to school in Winnipeg so we had high population of indigenous students in my high school, uh, same expectation wasn't there for my friends. Um, and I experienced it as a learner and even as an educator now in science ed, just because I'm Asian, maybe positive stereotype might work better for me than, you know, I, I experienced racism and such. But as a woman in academia in general, uh, the systematic has to change. There, there needs to be systematic changes, right? Um, the system itself is not really facilitating women to actually have work and life balance. So I don't know if I actually experienced any um, negative, um, negative, ex negative treatment because I'm a woman or because I'm Asian, but there had been definitely challenges because of the ideas that I put forth, the diversity in terms of thinking about ideas in science, um, I get lots of resistance. If I talk about indigenous knowledge in science, definitely I get huge pushback from academia and some from science teachers. So in that sense, yes. Um, so I guess in within the same vein, what are some other things that might still need improvement? I think two things needs to happen. First, people need to understand, especially in STEM scholars, we need to get rid of notion that we are the expert. I mean, yeah, we are the expert of little tiny research that we undertake, but there's vast of things that we don't know. That leads to my second question, that you, are, you should open to have dialogues, whether it be fellow STEM scholars, or it could be young people, or it could be local indigenous people, or it could be visual artists. You never know where you get your ideas from, and then you shouldn't be afraid to have dialogues and have criteria set up by your stereotype comes from your science STEM discipline. So that needs to, those are the you know, things that needs to happen. <laughs> How would you suggest that some people enter into these dialogues? It's hard, right? And especially we we only have limited time and resources for ourselves, and it's hard to open up your horizon to another field of study. But again, uh, it's also having your opening your attitude. That's first, and then second is continual reflection. Um, dialogue could happen between you and me, or from me to the world who's been maybe watching this video but dialogue should happen inside you because you have 
so many ideas that you have inside of your mind and heart. And sometimes you, without having that critical reflection time, even if you might have reflection, you know, the talk dialogue, you might not actually have any ideas and you might not change at all. So conversation is one thing with open hearts, but you have to have time and space, your cognitive or heart space, however you call it, to reflect what's working for you, what's not, and what's pushing you, what's not pushing you, and sort of having that reflection by yourself. And I guess to follow up on that, uh, what advice do you have for someone that's trying to pursue a career in the same field that you're in? Um, career same field in terms of science education or indigenous science and Western science? Both. Both. Um, if you are thinking about becoming a teacher, you actually have to understand that it's not only science that you actually have to transmit it to your students. It's also the attitude that you actually have to teach your students. And even though we've been taught the scientific way that, you know, or STEM education, it's a one way which we've been taught by the system. It's not the way. So as a teacher, you should open to have conversation outside of the STEM education scholars. You know, talk to your community member, talk to your students of what they think, and, you know, just open to lots of other resources. But second, that comes back to becoming critical thinker. You actually have to have your critical thinking ability and reflection time, what's working for you and what's right, what's not right for you at the time. And people, education or research or other STEM researcher who's thinking of collaborating with indigenous people, the first thing I say is you actually have to s situate yourself as a learner and really get to know the cultural protocol before you start doing anything. The research project has to start with the conversation with the indigenous people rather than you putting your research agenda. And that has been one of my challenges. Um, it takes a long time. There's no quick way. So if you are a researcher in STEM field thinking of doing any sorts of collaboration with indigenous people, the first thing should um, build relationship before anything. So those are my <laughs> two cents. <laughs> and uh, do you know of any initiatives uh, to improve diversity that are happening within your department or your faculty? So it's an interesting time and place when we talk about diversity within STEAM, right? Um, there's been so many initiatives. We uh, like, one of the STEAM Diversity Red Path Museum is another educational initiative. And for us, it's there's no initiative. It's part of who we are. So everything we do, we have to talk about diversity, whether it's women in science or indigenous people in science or different ideas in science, interdisciplinary. It's like diversity became sort of the part of the core foundation of the discussion, right? But um, yeah, but having that initiative, having that talk is not all. Like you actually have to enact. And sadly enough, here in Quebec, I don't really see much initiative yet, but hopefully it will change. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Okay, my final thought is science is about getting to know our world. However, whatever whatever you want to do however you want to do however you think it is it's there's no one particular answer so you might not think that whatever you're thinking is science it could well be so don't be afraid to have conversation be open-minded and join in the conversation <laughs>